Okay, this paper is about the change of two words in a single manuscript, potentially merely copying errors, but more likely intentional alterations. However, they had implications for how people regarded the history of Northern Britain, uh, playing a role in perceptions of origins and in claims about who should rule Scotland at the time of the Wars of Independence. The words in question are the personal name Albanus and the related population term Albani. When exploring the appearance of these words in our sources, we also gain insights into the relationship of Wales and Northern Britain in the 9th to 11th centuries, especially the intellectual contacts which may have existed between these, and also uh, insights into the main text I'll be discussing, the Welsh Historia Britonum. Historia Britonum, the history of the Britons, was written in 829 or 830 AD in Gwynedd in North West Wales. Based on a number of pre-existing sources, the text focuses on the settlement of Britain in ancient times, as well as the history of the Britons up to the late 7th century. It also included accounts of the settlements of the other inhabitants of Britain and Ireland, so the Gales, Picts and Saxons, although these were not the focus. The original his of, uh, version of Historia Britonum no longer exists, but the text survives in a number of different versions called recensions, in which the text has been altered in various ways. The interrelationships of these versions are indicated in this stunner, which is largely based on the work of David Dunville, with a few changes of my own on the right branch of the textual tradition. The Harleian text um, is regarded as the most reliable of these versions in general, and so I will tend to give it here, but it doesn't necessarily reflect uh, always the original version. Albanus appears in the origin legend section of the text, in one version of the account of the origins of the Britons and also the peoples of Europe. However, the focus of these accounts is on the Britons in general. The account of the settlement of Britain starts by stating that there are two, two alternative explanations. One, seemingly favoured by the author of Historia Britonum, was that the first settlers, the Britons, were descendants of the Trojans and related, therefore, to the Romans. In this version, which adapted ancient Roman accounts of the creation of Rome, uh, in this version, when Troy was destroyed, the Trojan leader Aeneas uh, came to Italy, settled among the Latins and married into their royal line. Aeneas's grandson, or great-grandson, depending on the, the version, uh, this person, Brito, was fated to kill his parents, and then when he uh, did this, he took, when this took place uh, through no fault of his own, Brito was banished from Italy, and after wandering for a while, he came to Britain, uh, filled it with his descendants, and the island was named after him. In the other account, Brutus, uh, an alternative form of Brito, uh, has biblical rather than Trojan ancestry. This section explains the origins of the different peoples of Europe, tracing peoples forwards from Noah, Japhet, and his descendant Alanus. In this account, as found in the Harleian version, one of the sons of Alanus was Hesitio, and his four sons were Francus, Romanus, Brito, and Albanus. And a little later, it states that from these, the Franks, Latins, Albani, and Britons were descended. This is the source from which the later text developed the story of Albanus. The first appearance of Albanus as a significant figure in Alba is in the Gaelic poem Duan Albanac, dated to the reign of Malcolm III, which is, uh, his reign was from 1058 to 1093. In this, Albanus is the first settler in Britain, but is later expelled by his brother Brutus. The meaning of the last stanza is somewhat cryptic, partly because it plays on the dual meaning of Alba in Gaelic. The peak of Bolivan is thought to be Beric Law in the territory of the Godovin tribe in Lothian. So the implication of that is, and, and this last stanza, is that um, Alba goes beyond Bodovin and includes the whole of Britain. 
However, the poem also displays knowledge of the other meaning of Alba, as a territory confined uh, to the area north of the Forth. Since Brutus does not take all of Britain, he left alone the core of the 11th century territory of Alba, north of the Forth. And this reflects a more constricted view of the meaning of Alba found in texts from the late 9th century onwards. The poem therefore makes Albanus the only primordial settler in this kingdom, uh, whereas Brutus has the area to the south of the Forth. And the implication is, in medieval eyes, that the later inhabitants of this region uh, to the north, Alba, uh, and also their king, uh, were also separate and therefore legitimate uh, kings and rulers of that area. This Albanus and Brutus account is not found before the 11th century. A clearly related account to it is also found in the Irish Leven Gabala Aaron, the Book of Invasions of Ireland, which appends it to the Table of Nations. Both Leva Gabala and Duan Albanac use the relationship of Albanus and Brutus as brothers uh, found in the earlier Leva Bretnac, a Gaelic translation and adaptation of Historia Bretonum, uh, which Thomas Clancy has argued was produced in Abernethy or St. Andrews. Therefore, overall, what we see in these accounts is how the name Albanus moved from being just a name in Historia Bretonum to gaining a more fully developed role in the history of Britain alongside his brother Brutus. However, the relationship with Brutus, the ancestor of the Britons, was later used against the men of Alba. <coughs> Geoffrey of Monmouth, the Welshman who wrote the extremely influential uh, Histor Historia Regum Britanniae in the 1130s, used Historia Britonum um, as a source, but recast the tale so that the Albanus figure, now called Albanactus, um, was made the son of Brutus. When Brutus dies, Britain is divided among his sons, Lacrinus that gains England, Camber, Wales, and Albanus receives Scotia, which he uh, therefore called Albania. Albanactus is killed by Humber, king of the Huns, uh, whom Lacrinus, assisted by Canva, defeats and kills. The episode, therefore, has Lacrinus representing England, saving Alba, and with the help of Wales. And it makes it clear that Britain was initially united under Brutus um, before becoming divided. While Geoffrey may not have intended Alban Actus to have been subordinate to Lacrinus, this uh, was the view of the English around the time of the Wars of Independence, and it was used by the English to claim overlordship over Scotland uh, based on this account. Therefore, whereas Albanac Albanus had once in Duan Albanac been used to demonstrate the antiquity of the Scottish realm, he came to be employed for the subjugation of the same kingdom. But when did Albanus start to become the ancestor of the people? start to be viewed as the ancestor of the people in Northern Britain. In general, scholars have not thought that Albanus and Albani in Historia Britonum originally represented Northern Britain at all. And as David Dumble has stated, um, it had better be stated here that Albanus has nothing to do with Scotland. Irish Alba, Latinized locally as Albania, came to refer specifically to North Britain only in the 10th century. Here, Albanus is the eponym of the inhabitants of Alba, uh, Longa, founded, according to our text, the fourth section four of uh, Historia Britonum, um, is founded by Aeneas, just as Romanus is the eponym of the Romani or Latino. So, um, so Dumble gives two reasons why Scotland was not intended. First, Albanus was related to Alba Longa in Italy, and secondly, this figure um, appears before Alba came to be used for Northern Britain. So it couldn't um, be meant, Northern Britain couldn't be meant by Historia Britonum's uh, Albanus. However, it's important to realise that Albanus was not actually in the original version of Historia Britonum created in 829 or 830, uh, although this has not, to my knowledge, been recognised before. Albanus and Albani are found in only some versions of Historia Britonum. In the Harleian version 
and also in Level Bregnac. And it's unclear whether it was once the reading of the fragmentary Nennian recension 2 at the bottom of the stemma. Um, it, it, it just, it's an addition, it found in additions to uh, a different version of Historia Britonum. So the other version doesn't have that section and it, there's no additions made to indicate that there was anything in the Nennian recension. However, Albanus and Albani um, are not found in all versions. They're not found in the Chartres, uh, Vatican, or um, Gildasian recensions. These have Alamanus or Alamanni instead, referring to the Germanic-speaking peak group in southern Germany conquered by the Franks in the middle of the 6th century. So it could be argued that Albanus, rather than Alamanus, was the original reading, but this is very unlikely because it is found uh, there's a source for this section and this is the table of nations found independently elsewhere in Europe and this text is thought to date uh, from the 6th century AD. So most notable for our purposes is that this text has uh, in all of its witnesses Alamanni rather than Albani among its list of peoples uh, in the equivalent section. Given the textual evidence, it is clear that Albanus and Albani are alterations made to the original Historia Britonum. But the question is when? The answer is of potential significance because in the late 9th and 10th, early 10th centuries, the ethnic identities of Northern Britain were transformed. Instead of the Picts and their kings, uh, who dominated much of Northern Britain for centuries, at the end of the 9th century, we start to have references to the kings of Alba and to Scotty, Albanig, Firu Alban, uh, which means the men of Alba. Um, we have Scotty and Gales for the people. As I have mentioned, Alba comes to mean not only Britain, but also part of the island. It has two meanings in Gaelic literature. In Latin, instead of Pictavia, in this, at this time, we start to find that there's Albania or Scotia or Scotland in English. Re Alban, uh, meaning King of Alba, first appears in AD 900 in the Irish Chronicles. And the territorial term Albania uh, is found in the Chronicle of the Kings of Alba, um, a contemporary chronicle, in, in, at least in some of its sources. Um, it has Albania in events for 903 AD. However, these terms may have come into use in preceding decades. It doesn't necessarily mean that 900 was the first time this term was ever used, or, um, just because that's when our first bit of evidence is. So it, is, it may well have been a term in use in preceding decades, because there is no surviving entry in the Irish Chronicles on the death of the king of the Picts after 878. The Chronicle of the Kings of Alba still mentions Pictavia rather than Albania in the 890s, but an overlap in the use of terminology is possible, so an earlier date cannot be ruled out. If Albanus and Albani in Historia Britonum also refer to Northern Britain, then this could provide another early reference of this, to this change, at least contemporary or maybe even somewhat earlier then the references in the Chronicle of Ireland and also the Chronicle of the Kings of Alba. Given the scarcity of our evidence, this would have uh, considerable significance. Fortunately, we can date the inclusion of these words more precisely. Turning to the stemma again, David Dunvall has discussed a note uh, found in the Nenian recension which relates to King Anarald, King of Gwynedd. From the chronological data this note contains, it indicates that it was added uh, to an ancestor text of the Nedian recension um, in either 907 AD or 912 AD. This addition is not found in the Harleian or Gildasian recensions, so an ancestor of the, of the Nedian recension was in existence as a separate copy by this time. The note was added in North Wales, most likely in Anglesey. Um, so this Nenian recension ancestor was still in Wales, um, uh, rather than being moving to Scotland by this time. 
This is significant since both the Harleian and historic Leverbretnet recensions have Albanus. This means that the Albanus change can be dated to before the NRL chronological note, and also the change can be located in Wales. The Albanus editions were also considerably later than the original Historia Britonum of, 920, of 829 or 830, which had Alamanus or Alamani, as I've already said. Since the Harleian recension contains an additional chronological statement in section 12, which at Dunville claims was added in 8, uh, 859 or later, Uh, sorry, yeah, so he claims that this was added in 859 or later. This statement is also found in the Gildasian version of Historia Britonum, which has Alamanus, as you can see in the centre. This would then, therefore, indicate from all this, putting it together, that um, the Albanus and Al Albani replaced uh, Alamanus and Alamani after 857, but at before 8, sorry, 912 AD. And given this date range, Albani are much more likely to have met the people of Northern Britain than if it, it had come into the text earlier. However, there are three possible ob objections to this interpretation. One is that the change from Alamanus to Albani was simply a mistake due to a copying error. However, this is unlikely to have happened twice. Uh, and Alamanus is not that close to Albanus in its, in its form, and it cannot really be a coincidence that a real population term was chosen as the new form. A second potential objection is that Albani here could refer to all the inhabitants of Britain uh, using the earlier meaning of Alba. However, Historia Britonum already had Brito, Brito uh, from whom the Britons were descended. Multiplying the number of ancestor figures for the Britons would have become problematic for the Welsh and therefore, I think, would have been avoided. The third problem, uh, stated by David Dunville, is more serious, that there is another uh, group called the Albani in Historia Britonum. Alba Longa, uh, which is a place to, to the south of the River Tiber in Latium, was a precursor settlement of Rome. Its inhabitants were called Albani, and the dynasty of Aeneas was supposedly founded, uh, with, sorry, the dynasty of Aeneas supposedly founded this state and ruled it for generations afterwards. It was from Alba Longa that Romulus and Remus were supposedly cast out as babies by the river Tiber, where they later founded Rome. Knowledge of Alba Longa or the Albani is displayed in a couple of places in Historia Britonum. In the first account of the origins of the Britons, uh, which was Hole in section 10, it states that Aeneas or Aeneas' son Ascanius founded Alba. And in section 11 of Historia Britonum, it mentions that from Silvius, that the kings of the Albani are called Silvii, um, wood dwellers. So given these references in the original Historia Britonum, it is possible that someone would have later changed Alamanus to Albanus with Albalonga's inhabitants in mind, uh, potentially. But how likely is that? Albalonga and its role in the prehistory of Rome would have been known among the learned, presumably clergymen, who were writing Historia Britonum and its copies in 9th century Wales. Alba Longa is mentioned Virgil, in Virgil's Aeneid, which was a common teaching text of the time, and it appears in Isidore of Seville's uh, Etymologies and the very influential uh, late Roman Eusebius Jerome Chronicle, which was possibly the source for the account of the um, Aeneas and his successors in the original Historia Britonum. Moreover, an addition of probably the mid 9th century. Uh, to the Chartres and Vatican recensions, uh, which was included in Wales, discusses the Trojan ancestry of the Britons, including early kings in Italy, uh, although it doesn't actually mention uh, Alba or Albani. Therefore, it is clear that there's another time when people were, another piece of evidence from Historia Britonum's tradition, where people are clearly interested in this section and know about this history. Um, 
So the likelihood is overall that the person who changed Alamanus to Albanus would have known about Alba Longa and its role in the early history of Rome. For such a me uh, medieval scholar, the change to Albanus would not have made much sense if Alba Longa were intended. The Albani, like the Romans and also the Britons, were also Latins and Romans, rather than being a separate people. Also, while there was a period after the foundation of Rome when Romans and Albani were separate sort of brother peoples uh, in different cities, this was not for long. Later, Rome, under their third king, Tullus Hostilius, um, took over Alba Longa, according to the sort of Roman tradition. And he destroyed the city and forced all its inhabitants uh, to move to Rome. When this happened, the Romans also became Albani to a greater extent. So it is very doubtful whether someone from Wales would have thought that the Albani of Italy would justifiably be placed on the same level as contemporary people such as the Franks, Romans and Britons as a separate um, people. We should therefore look for a more positive reason for these changes. The inclusion of a contemporary people inhabiting northern Britain would provide such a reason since it could, could potentially explain the origins of this population group. Finding a precise context for how knowledge of Alba came to Wales at this time is difficult. Direct evidence for relations with the Picts and Alba um, between these two groups uh, and Wales uh, is not strong. Annales Cambriae Welsh Annals mention the death of the Pictish king uh, Kenneth MacAlpine uh, and also in the, in the Irish Chronicum Scotorum um, under the year 904 AD, we have the somewhat obscure entry uh, on the killing of a king of Cruthentur, uh, king of the Picts. Um, and this killing is by the Vikings uh, under the descendants of Ivar and also uh, a certain Cadol who is perhaps a Briton. However, the surviving items are unlikely to be representative of all the contacts that existed at one time. So direct contacts cannot be ruled out. But it is also quite possible that the cultural contacts were via the Northern Britons in Strathclyde. One of the kings uh, ruling the Picts from seven, so 878 until about 889 was a person called Yoki, uh, the son of Rhun, uh, the king of Strath, who's the king of Strathclyde. So we have a son of um, the king of Strathclyde who's ruling among uh, the, uh, the Picts or Altmen of Alba. So this has been regarded by Alex Wolfe and others as the time when major changes took place in organisation inside Alba, with girls achieving significant positions. So it could potentially have been the time when Alba and Albania became established terms for this, representing this new changed kingdom. There is also evidence for connections between Wales and the northern British kingdoms of Dumbarton Rock and its Strathclyde successor which would help to, uh, us to understand the sort of way, you know, the, the likelihood of this sort of connection. So we have St. Pentagon of Glasgow being cultured in both Glasgow and Wales. We have also a literary transfer from the north to Wales in the 9th century or perhaps a bit earlier of the Gododin. And also there may be ideas of the wild man Lilac and um, informing ideas of Merlin in Wales. So this literary transmission um, in the early medieval period, it's very hard to pin them down more specifically. So, if we're thinking about more direct context in the late um, 9th century, we should also be thinking about how in the Viking Age, the Scandinavians in Strathclyde may well have actually, rather than reducing the number of contacts through the Irish Sea Zone into North Wales, may actually have increased it and may have provided potential avenues for this information to get to Wales. So it might be the case, therefore, that knowledge of the names Alba and Albania spread to Britons of Strathclyde from the Picts and then passed onto the copyist of Historia Britonum in Gwyneth in the second half of the 9th century or the first decade of the 10th. So in conclusion, it is likely that the change made in Historia Britonum was intentional, reflecting the existence of a new people, the Albani. 
However, the potential for using the figure of Albanus in a more substantial role was only really explored from the 11th century onwards. Albanus never came to have a major role in shaping Scottish ideas of origins and identity. Because there were already alternative Gaelic and Pictish ideas, and also later on there were English options, which came to be dominant for expressing identity. But overall, I think this uh, development of this character helps us to understand better the cultural connections and also uh, ideas and transmission of these ideas um, in the Viking Age in the British Isles. Uh, thank you.